Thank you, Raheem, for showing us all how to burn these three objects uh, joyfully and safely. Hopefully everyone else, all you students, uh, had a good time uh, and were safe burning these three objects. One thing that jumped out for me was how differently these three things burn, the steel wool, the paper, and the wood. Uh, that kind of means, or that could mean, that coming up with a unified theory of fire uh, will be challenging, but our goal is just to simply make headway as we can. So let me continue the story of Johan Betcher. Remember, he was the teenager who was mesmerized by a uh, candle flame and came up with some profound questions which are actually driving uh, our work in this course. So I'm gonna go ahead and read from the course platform and we're continuing to follow Johan Betcher. It's 20 years later, so he's now an adult. He's the closest thing to a scientist you might find in the 1600s. They didn't really call them scientists then. Uh, but he was educated in what's called the world of alchemy, that sort of proto-chemistry or pre-chemistry. Uh, there's a you know, multi-thousand year history of alchemy that you know, meandered throughout the entire globe. So every culture has you know, amazing contributions uh, to alchemy and therefore chemistry. Um, so we're in the 1600s in Germany, uh, and Betcher is now pacing back and forth in his laboratory. And everything about this four uh, element classical theory, and that, that theory says that everything in the universe is made of four things, that's it. Fire, air, earth, and water. Uh, and so he's, he's pacing back and forth in his laboratory, wondering if this conception, which is kind of established, it's canon in science, is true. So Betcher stops walking and looks directly into the eyes of his young student. He now has a, has a young protege whose name is George Ernst Stahl. And Betcher says, Stahl, fire cannot be an element. So this is like a revelation he's coming up with as he's pacing back and forth in his laboratory. So fire cannot be an element. Earth, air, and water, you can touch those. They can be hot. They can be cold. They have mass. But fire, something is different about fire in relation to these other three quote-unquote elements. Sir, young Stahl is stunned. He's not seeing where his mentor's going with this radical line of thinking. Like I said, breaking with 2,000 years of established science, he's not sure if Betcher has completely lost his mind, if this old man has completely lost his mind. Uh, but what Stahl wants to do is make sure he can follow along because he's, he knows he knows his teacher, he knows his mentor. It's gonna be an interesting ride. So Stahl says, Sir, uh, respectfully, you are contradicting a core scientific principle. I am, of course, interested. But before you go on, may I review for you what we do know about fire, just so I can understand your line of thinking. So uh, Betcher clearly is okay with this. Why, yes, please go ahead, my young student and review what we believe. So Stahl, great student, having meticulously taken notes, reiterates what they've learned, and none of this is gonna be shocking to you. It's pretty, it's, it's nice basic observations about what fire actually is and what fire actually does. So Stahl says, number one, fire requires something to burn, obvious. Fire begins when a burnable substance is ignited or held in a flame and the fire disappears when the substance is used up, obvious. The leftovers after a substance uh, is burned are very different from the original substance. Obvious. If you burn a tree, hopefully you don't, uh, the burnt tree looks nothing like the original tree and you never can get that original tree back, which is a, another issue. Um, we observe that, the, th the third observation is we observe that something from a fire seems to be carried up into the air with smoke. So fire gives off smoke. So he's just recounting these basic observations we all know about fire. Wait, Stahl, his eyes light up. He's about to say something more, but sees Betcher's intense stare and kind of, you know, stops in his tracks. I'm waiting, Stahl. Betcher cuts in, breaking the awkward silence. Have you something else in mind you'd like to add? So uh, Betcher sees that Stahl might be seeing where Betcher's going with this line of thinking. Stahl might be catching on. Well, yes, I think I might know what you are thinking. So Betcher says, oh, do you now? Okay, young man, enlighten me. Stahl takes a big gulp of air. If when things burn, there is less of the substance left over, fire must be taking some of that substance away up into the air. That kind of makes sense. Betcher answers back, yes. So the fire exists in the substance all along. 
even before igniting it. So there's, they're developing this new theory here, uh, kind of together. Stahl interjects. Uh, he's all feeling more confident. He's actually interjecting and interrupting his, his professor, his teacher. And whatever this fire substance is, it goes up into the air and it becomes another form of air, which is also kind of radical. Remember we said air is just one element. He's saying now we have another form of air. So that's kind of an interesting break from tradition. And maybe we call it, so Stahl boldly says, he's giving this new air a name. Maybe we call it phlogiston after the ancient word meaning burning up. Phlogiston. Yes, that's what we call it. Stahl's, Stahl says approvingly, knowing his young protege has a very bright uh, future ahead of him. So let's summarize how this new theory explains our observations. So with a new certitude, Stahl outlines the main points of this new, we'll call it the theory of phlogiston. So they're thinking of wood when they're coming up with this theory. So it must, so thinking of wood, it must have phlogiston in it. We ignite the wood, the phlogiston is released, and the flame stops when all the phlogiston in the wood has left the wood. So again, this is the first tenet of this theory. The leftover ash, which is different than the original wood, uh, the leftover ash is different than the original wood, of course, and the wood, therefore, must be made up of ash and phlogiston. The phlogiston is the hot gas that is carried up in the air. So basically, they're saying that wood, or any Wood, we'll just take wood for example, is made up of two things, ash and phlogiston. And when there's enough energy given to the wood, the phlogiston goes up and ash is left behind. So therefore, wood is made up of a mixture of ash and phlogiston. Uh, and he continues on. And on top of this, we can venture to say how much phlogiston uh, different materials have. So they're getting this theory is still consistent with all their observations, which is kind of cool. That's what theories should should do. They should explain a wide uh, breadth of observations and phenomena. Something like wood that leaves a lot of ash behind must have a lower content of phlogiston, and something like candle wax, which leaves you know, very little ash behind, must have a higher content of phlogiston. So this is our working theory. This is their working theory, and we'll see if we can confirm or disconfirm this throughout the remainder of the labs that we do in this course.